Welcome to GBRI's course, Energy Efficient Lighting Solutions for Green Buildings. Please take this opportunity to adjust your speakers and monitor to best view the presentation. I'm Rebecca Joan Brown, and I'll be conducting the first half of the course today. The second half will be taught by Jeslyn Varghese. Reporting number and other information will be included on the last slide of this presentation. Lighting is one of the major consumers of energy in commercial office buildings. With this course, our aim is to prepare you to implement more efficient lighting strategies into your projects by explaining the costs and benefits associated with each. This is a 300 level course that includes a good amount of detail, so please have notes ready to go. In order to get credit for this on-demand presentation, you will need to complete the associated quiz with a score of at least 80%. The quiz can be found in the same list as this presentation in your on-demand content page, and you may review the material and retake the quiz as often as you would like. According to the Department of Energy, lighting represents roughly 30 to 40 percent of energy consumption in a commercial building. This is second to heating and cooling, which is the majority consumer of energy in an air-conditioned office building. In some cases, Lighting may actually be the primary consumer of building energy. The chart on this sh slide shows average building energy usage breakdown. The LEED rating system places great importance on energy use reduction, and this is the most heavily weighted credit section in the three major rating systems. Understanding the breakdown of energy use in a building is the first step towards efficiency. Not only does it pave the way for improving efficiency, but also helps the building engineer to identify errors and address necessary repairs. There are several factors promoting energy efficiency in lighting as well as other building systems. Over the last 40 years, culture has become more aware of the impact of industry on the environment, and there's been a social movement to reduce the negative impacts of modern lifestyles. Energy costs have also risen, as fuels that had been easily available, such as coal and oil, have been depleted and are now more expensive to extract. Many of these fuels, particularly oil, are imported from overseas and their reliance on other nations for our basic energy needs is a worrying economic and political issue. The rise of green building programs has created a positive incentive for buildings to increase their efficiency, as a green certification can attract potential buyers and tenants. Another positive incentive for energy efficiency is rebates offered by federal and local governments for either reduced consumption or use of a specific energy efficient technology. As with any sustainability initiative, goals for efficient lighting should be outlined during the initial design meetings and charrettes. By highlighting these goals at the beginning of the project, Designers make it easier for design teams to integrate these solutions from the beginning. During the schematic design phase, occupancy and function should be considered to determine the appropriate lighting strategies. These strategies should be measured against baseline conditions to determine if efficiency goals are likely to be met. During the detailed design phase, these strategies should be further analyzed using energy and other simulations. During the construction phase, verification and commissioning can determine if efficiency goals are indeed being met. Fluorescent lamps use 60 to 75 percent less energy compared to incandescent lamps to provide the same amount of illumination. They also last about 10 times longer than their incandescent counterparts, reducing waste. Although fluorescent bulbs do contain mercury, their longer lifespan means they will prevent toxification of the environment as compared to the lead that comes from incandescent bulbs. In either case, light bulbs should be recycled at designated facilities rather than being thrown out to a landfill. Unlike incandescent bulbs, fluorescent lamps have a high voltage startup and therefore require ballast. Present day electronic ballasts are better in terms of performance than standard electromagnetic ballasts. There are two main types of fluorescent bulbs, fluorescent tubes and compact fluorescent lamps. The Genzyme Center is a 350,000 square foot, 
12-story office building, which serves over 900 employees. The goals for the project were to incorporate green practice as a part of an overall focus on innovation and productivity. The project was completed in November of 2003 and earned a LEED New Construction Platinum Rating.